Hello and welcome to another Maximum Power Up video. I'm Paul. Uh, for anyone who's actually sick of seeing me, uh, Tom, who's recently joined the team, is going to be doing a couple of videos as well. So it's not just going to be me talking about Super Nintendo stuff all the time, um, which I'm sure will be a nice change. Although, saying that, uh, the video I'm doing now is also going to be, well, Super Nintendo stuff. Um, I think it's mainly because obviously that's what I concentrate on, so I apologise in advance for this. But if you do like Super Nintendo, you're in luck, you know. Anyway, um, I've got another couple of games on the way um, to mark off my Super Play Top 100. Um, one of the ones that did come through the door a few days ago, uh, which I put a uh, tweet out, was... Um, basically Spike McFang, but this is the uh, Japanese version of it. Uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce it because I've not got a clue. Um, it's a game I've never actually played. Uh, this cost £10. Um, again, boxing, well, what the uh, Japanese classed as average condition, but I would say it's uh, quite good. Uh, also comes with the... Uh, little instruction manual. Uh, for some reason as well they did chuck in some sort of miracle battle card. A little freebie, you know, not something I'm up on. And then got the uh, cartridge as well, all in uh, good condition. So that was £10. Now to get it on uh, American you are looking about £150 because there's no UK uh, PAL version for it. So that's obviously a massive difference, you know, cost-wise. Um, also, the other thing that's come through the door is not this. This is leading on to my next point. This was the last issue of Superplay magazine, issue uh, 47. Just coming up to 20 years ago now, since it finished. Um, one thing I was intrigued when I was just having to flick through it. I mean, like I say, Superplay did end up going fairly thin the last few um, issues really um, but obviously I'm concentrating on getting you know the Super Play Top 100 here we have got the Super Play uh, Cheese Emporium so the worst games um, not something I'm even going to waste my money trying to collect but in there you've got things like Pit Fighter uh, American Gladiators um, California Games 2 Wayne's World uh, there's quite a lot of these like early THQ games like um, Home Alone and things. I know that I've had a pop at them in the past, uh, either on the show or on um, YouTube videos. Um, Wheel of Fortune uh, is another one. Um, Captain America. Oh, God. So, yeah, there is quite a few. If you've, to be fair, we've only done a uh, bottom 50, I should say. So, not a top 50. Um, but anyway, uh, getting get on to the actual um, point is um, basically Super Play, massive, massive, you know, fan of that magazine, uh, and I know a lot of other people were. Now, one thing in Super Play uh, back then, and we said before how the internet became more and more popular, uh, well, obviously, all the fanzines, uh, you know, made by people like uh, me and you, um, and obviously giving their take on games, news, things like that. And that's where this comes in. Now, I've just received this through the post now. Uh, Hyperplay fanzine. Uh, little A5 um, fanzine, black and white. Uh, proper throwback to the old days of fanzines. Something I actually like, again, being into retro stuff. Uh, this is issue zero. It cost me £3.50, so it's not bad at all. And first of all, it's thicker than I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be about 16 pages, you know, something like that. Um, this is someone I've actually spoke to on um, on Twitter quite a bit. Well, mainly around the uh, Super Super Play Top 100. And even though I'd seen this, you know, advertised quite a bit, I'd still not got around to, you know, ordering it. And I know that obviously now we've got issue one you know that's going to be on its way quite soon um so yeah the idea obviously of this is we have got um mainly based around uh rpgs hence the name i play rpg um now super nintendo was well known for uh all its rpgs 
you know, a lot of them obviously only came out in Japan, but as you know, time's gone on, you've been able to get more fan uh, translations done. Uh, you've also got things like the uh, Retro 5, where you can obviously use the patches so you can actually play these RPGs that back then, you know, what, 20 odd years ago, we wouldn't have had a chance to. So it's sort of like quite an exciting time. So, first thing noticed is there's a little thank you notice on the bottom here. Um, if I butcher your name, I apologise. It, is it Kin Kinsel? Um, Kinsel? Um, but yeah, thank you for that. It just makes it, you know, a little bit more of a personal touch. So, I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, brilliant. Obviously, I'm aware of quite a lot of RPGs now, you know, as a, of like, done more podcasts and things like that but there's still loads are not played so looking at this like I say it's 40 odd pages so it's not bad at all on the back here we've got the uh, preview for uh, issue one and then it's obviously got its roots in Superplay that's something I'm going to uh, notice straight away so you've got your contents page again quite yeah 40 pages so quite a lot in that and then you've also got from a small chair um, you know the editorial there talking about what we actually want to bring to uh, the magazine um, so this was done in June this year so like I say I'm a good few months behind with this and then you've obviously got your news as you would in you know like any magazine back then I'd say magazines now but there's not really that many and then you've also got um, bit of like, well, in a way a voting system type thing, um, you know, for them to review one of these games. And again, obviously RPGs. Quite a few on there, um, I am aware of a few that I've played, like uh, Terra Enigma, Fable, uh, Shadow Hearts games and Final Fantasies. Um, so obviously you've just got more news there, and then you've got uh, a big four page review of Final Fantasy 4 on the um, PSP uh, again broken broken down just like reviews used to be with the graphics, sound, gameplay, longevity uh, and an overall score you know I've got some great artwork as well um, it really is Final Fantasy heavy this issue you know then you've got a um, review here of Final Fantasy 6 or Final Fantasy 3 so just looking over at the shelf um, that's the uh, American uh, version of it and then I'll probably butcher this uh, Baramut Lagoon uh, a game I've seen but never played um, again that's um, reviewed from a fan, tra uh, a fan translation and then you've got a feature looking at uh, buying games over in Tokyo uh, you got some letters pages I don't want to give everything away because I'm quite impressed with the amount of stuff in here and then there's um, a four page uh, feature on buying on eBay you know it's trying to buy obviously as a collector a few tips and obviously what to be looking for and uh, different ways of actually um, looking for you know some of the items you may not have thought of looking for you know um, misspelling and things like that and then there's a couple of page uh, pages on the PSP uh, quite a underrated console um, I remember like working at game station when the PSP came out I know there's quite a lot of RPGs for it and everything I know obviously you can do like homebrew stuff on and um, and things like that uh, but it's just something that I've never really got into I have actually owned a PSP a good while back but yeah, I've, I've never really uh, owned one since. Uh, anyway, uh, obviously you've got uh, other things reviewed as well. Uh, so you've got book reviews. Um, one thing that did sort of just puzzle me a little bit, which um, sort of came out of nowhere really, um, is a review here for Tiger Woods 2010, reviewing a few games that they played recently. Um, but yeah, it's, well, man, you play test games that we've actually played recently, so I suppose it answers it there. And then we've got something which I can't wait to read, a couple of pages about Super Play. It's just good to hear, uh, you know, from um, a different opinion, you know, what they thought of the magazine. And uh, yeah, then you've got a few other little bits. 
so not bad at all. I will be getting issue one when obviously it does uh, come out and everything. Uh, give them a follow, just uh, Hyperplay RPG on uh, Twitter. Um, yeah, it's 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 not bad. You know, it's just I didn't think I'd really find myself buying um, a games fanzine. You know, especially like the year 2015 and everything. But again, with the whole retro boom, it's sort of another way of actually covering retro gaming. And, well, going back to a retro way of covering retro gaming, I should say. God, almost tripping myself up saying that. But yeah, it, it will be interesting. Obviously, if you are a fan of the uh, RPGs, well worth checking out. £3.50, price of a pint really, isn't it? And uh, 40 pages keep you going for a little while anyway. Okay, that's all for me. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.